what we have here is just a cassette case. Let me show you one up close. Uh, you might be able to see this. Um, just a clear cassette case with a uh, piece of spherical glass, acrylic caulk to the case. Uh, this is going to form a lens. Now, to get the spherical piece of glass, we take uh, a clear Christmas tree ornament. These are craft ornaments uh, meant to be painted, decorated, uh, stuff built inside them, whatever. Um, you can get them fairly cheaply after Christmas. Uh, if you break one of these, just go ahead and smash it. And I'm not going to do that on camera. I don't want to set a bad example. Um, but if we break this, we get little pieces of the sphere. And that's what we've glued or caulked onto the cassette case to make each lens. Then all we do is we fill this region in here with water. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some Mountain Dew in this one. Hopefully it won't make a mess. So you can see probably that now it's full of Mountain Dew and it has certain properties. Now we'll do this with the Mountain Dew first then we'll do it with the clear water. If I shine light through here we see the light passing through and striking uh, this screen back here. If I move back and forth trying to keep the light parallel we see that as I move to the right the point of light moves to the left. As I move to the left, the point of light moves to the right. As I move up, the light moves. And it looks like we've got a leak. Okay, I'm going to take that away there. Because I don't want a lot of water here. Looks like it's too late for that. Um, I thought we'd check these to make sure they don't leak. No, actually, that's one that I sealed earlier. Okay, sorry. Now, as I move up and down, the point moves down and up. If I come in much closer to the lens, as I move back and forth, as I move to the right, the point moves to the right. As I move to the left, it moves to the left. So the point moves along with the pointer, and same with up and down, down, up, down, up. So I move the pointer down, the point moves down. As I move the pointer up, the point moves up. Now, there should be a point between where up matches up and down matches down, and a point where up here means down there, and up there means down here, and so forth. There should be a point somewhere in between where if I move the pointer, back and forth, I don't get much motion. And that, of course, you'll probably recognize is the point at which the laser focuses, or at which the lens focuses parallel rays. Now, I'm putting the line level tight up against the laser pointer. There's a dot marked on the lens here and a dot marked here. I'm going to level the laser pointer by putting the bubble on the level in the middle and I'm going to shine the light right on that point, the top point. And I'm going to aim the thing so that we get onto the scale. Now you can't see because of all the blur but there's a ruler on that screen and the light that goes through this point that's horizontal, that's leveled here, hits that screen at about 6.9 centimeters. Now I'm going to lower the laser pointer a little bit and level it and manipulate it so that it hits at the lower dot. And I see when I look that the light that goes through this lower dot also hits at 6.9 centimeters along this screen. If I move the screen back here and aim the pointer carefully, it appears that light is hitting at a distance of 
Well, the position is seven centimeters. Light that hits the bottom is hitting at about five and a half centimeters. So that we can see that the light that comes in here parallel is diverging as it comes out here. Now I could measure this distance. As a matter of fact, let's mark the position of the lens here. Let's pretend that we had marked the position here where there was no movement. And we'll mark the position here. And we'll record some data that allows us to determine exactly how these rays are traveling. I could, of course, bring the screen in closer. And this screen is nothing but another cassette case with a piece of a photocopy of a ruler attached to it. And I can point the light through the top, line, top mark, hitting at about 6.6 .6 centimeters. And then through the bottom mark, it looks like it's hitting at about 7.2 centimeters. I could mark that position. And I could even put my 6.6 .6 and 7.2 down here. I just spilled my lens. Um, uh, 6.6 .6 and 7.2. Now I can measure the distance between these lines or these points and uh, proceed as instructed on the experiment. I could repeat the experiment for this lens. Now this lens is thicker. It came out of a smaller ball. It actually came out of a ball this size and the one we just saw came out of a, a, a ball or Christmas tree ornament that was uh, four inches in diameter as opposed to the three of this one. Now if I want to find the focal point for this one, It actually comes out pretty close to what I marked for the other. But then I didn't mark the other all that carefully. And I didn't really spill all of the water. So let's see where this one focuses. About here. OK, so it's going to be about there. Now by looking at the marks in the paper, we can tell where each lens was and where each lens focused. And then we have some other data. And we can analyze that data to see how the rays are passing through the lens.